physical pain cannot be as effective as corporal punishment. They are not strict enough. They will eventually cause students to just ignore the things teachers are saying. However, corporal punishment will definitely be a good idea to teach students how to behave properly and settle down bad students so class can go on very well. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker, teachers are professional educators and should be trusted to use corporal punishment. They will watch students' behavior and if they think it's appropriate and necessary for them, they will do what they must. Sometimes, students who misbehave come from families who are too soft on them. So teachers have to manage them and punish them appropriately to correct their misbehaviors. If teachers do not try to manage them, ridiculous, Mr. Speaker. They will think they'll have a second chance and they will try to be I'll horrified and deeply troubled by the Prime Minister's address about allowing corporal punishment in schools. Corporal punishment, which is a deliberate infliction of pain for the purpose of correction or punishment, is still being used by teachers in some parts of the world. This is an outrage. I believe that corporal punishment should never be allowed in school. Punishment can destroy the relationship between the student and the teacher. It can damage the trust that students have in their teachers. Mr. Speaker, if a child is afraid of his teachers or dislikes them because they hit him or her, he or she may not tell the teachers about important matters such as being bullied at school or being abused at home. Also, the child may be afraid to go to school and may start skipping school by their teachers. Because of corporal punishment, they will have... We, the government, strongly believe that corporal punishment should be allowed in schools. Mr. Speaker, when many countries around the world banned corporal punishment, they probably thought that they were doing something good. However, in places where corporal punishment has been banned, there are many serious problems in schools. As a result, the support for the use of corporal punishment has been increasing, and more and more people are saying that corporal punishment should be allowed in schools. People who oppose corporal punishment have said that spanking children teaches them that violence is a reasonable way to change bad behavior. However, Mr. Speaker, Speaker corporal punishment is wrong as it involves physical and emotional harm. It is never right to hit a child. Furthermore, the power of physical punishment to teach a child the difference between right and wrong is doubtful. A young child may learn that the adult is displeased, but not why. Mr. Speaker, no matter how well-intentioned teachers may be when they hit students, there are always negative repercussions. Also, the fact that so many countries have banned corporal punishment and that these schools are functioning well is proof that corporal punishment is not needed. And make the child hostile. Corporal punishment is the right thing to use and that it will improve child's behavior the teacher may choose to physically punish the children. Sometimes students who misbehave come from their families who are too soft on them and to not discipline them enough, so it becomes the teacher's job to discipline these children. For these children, corporate punishment may be the answer. Students who misbehave come from their families. In 2010, when corporal punishment was banned in all schools in Seoul, the capital city of South Korea. This was a great decision. Corporal punishment does not belong in schools and should never be allowed in schools because it is violent, ineffective, and unnecessary methods of discipline. Mr. Speaker, most civilized countries today recognize the harm that corporal punishment can do to children and have consequently ended the corporal punishment of children in schools. Schools in Canada do not permit their teachers to use corporal punishment as a method of discipline. Mr. Speaker, most civilized countries... It gives me great pleasure to rise before the House to address today's motion on whether corporal punishment should be allowed in schools. According to a recent call of poll, most North Americans think that discipline is the biggest problem in public education today. Several studies also show strong public support for corporal punishment. 
This government completely agrees with the opinion expressed in the poll and the use of corporal punishment in schools. Mr. Speaker, corporal punishment should be allowed in schools because it is a very effective solution to students' misbehavior. But yet expressed in the poll and fully supports the use of corporal punishment. The child is afraid of his teachers or dislikes them because they hit him. He may not tell the important matters such as being bullied at school or being abused at home. Also, the child may become afraid to go to school and may start skipping school. Finally, Mr. Speaker, studies show that corporal punishment is not often used fairly and that its consequences are very harsh. In the USA, according to the National Coalition to Abolish Corporal Punishment in Schools, it is used mainly on poor, disabled, minority, and male children. For example, African-American children represent 17% of the public school population, yet make up 39% of the students who get corporal punishment to go to schools and may start skipping school. The teachers' power to control the class is removed. Many students choose not to pay attention or work hard in class, as there have been no negative or harsh consequences for such behavior. I will now continue the government case. Mr. Speaker, corporal punishment, or the deliberate infliction of pain for the purpose of correction or punishment, should be allowed in schools, as it is an efficient way to control the misbehavior of students. Unfortunately, in many countries, governments have banned this time-tested practice, which has worked well for teachers for hundreds of years, and which, therefore, should remain an option available to teachers. A ban on corporal punishment takes away from teachers a very effective method of discipline. Mr. Speaker, corporal punishment deals with naughty and unruly individuals who disrupt the class and make the learning difficult for the rest of the students. It is deeply unfair to the other students that the teacher is wasting his or her time dealing with these delinquents in an effort to fix the attitude. Many students who misbehave in school came from unstable families. Some of them already has been abused at home by their parents. Teacher is one of the few others who this children can reach out for support and comfort. But if the teacher also hits them, they mistrust and fear the teacher and will be left out without anyone to talk or get help from. Moreover, Mr. Speaker, most countries recognize the damage that corporal punishment can do to children, and many have banned it in their schools. Sudan banned in 1957, Finland in 1969, Norway in 1972, and South Korea's capital city banned the use of corporal punishment in its school in 2010. In Canada, Corporal punishment is not permitted in both public and private schools. Before closing, Mr. Speaker, I would like to repeat that corporal punishment should not be allowed in schools because physical punishment is wrong. I'm very proud of the progress that the students are making and debating. They're speaking much more confidently and doing amazingly well in rebuttal, which is usually an element in debate that even de experienced debaters find difficult. They're expanding their vocabulary and knowledge of debate procedures. And in our most recent debate, they were mimicking Canada's parliament and having a lot of fun portraying Canada's prime minister and leader of the opposition.